Hi, welcome to this new session of the Let's Talk About Scala 3 series. My name is Eric Lutz and today I'll be talking about resolving artifacts with Coursier. If you're new to this topic and you haven't watched the introductory video on Coursier, I would highly recommend watching it as it explains what Coursier is and how it can be used to set up a Scala development environment. So with that, Let's go to the topic of today, which is using Coursier to resolve library artifacts. So for starters, what is an artifact? Well, if you develop a Scala or a Java application, you will most likely use external libraries that provide some functionality and expose APIs. These libraries have binary artifacts that are published, for example, on Maven Central, and they are typically published by an organization using a so-called group ID. Within a group, one or more libraries can be published with each library specified by its artifact ID. Over time, different versions of the artifacts will be published. And so an artifact is actually identified by these three parameters, the group ID, the artifact ID, and the version. Versions are composed of three parts, the major, the minor, and the patch version. <clears throat> in the case of Scala, there's an additional twist to the plot in the sense that the Scala libraries are built against one or more combinations of a major and minor version of Scala. The effect of this is that the Scala version, major and minor, appears as part of the artifact ID. We'll see that in a moment during the demonstration part of this talk. So let's see how we can use Coursier to get at all this information. So we are going to use the CS launcher called CS and we specify the complete subcommand. As you can see, this command takes one argument which is composed of the group ID the artifact ID and the version, and these three fields are separated by colons. Now, the nice thing about CS complete is that we can search based on partial information. For example, we can search on a given prefix of, of a group ID or an artifact ID. If we add a colon after a completed group ID and hit enter, we get all the published artifacts under that group ID and we can continue and ask, for example, for a specific artifact ID, artifact ID from the returned list. If we repeat this by adding yet another colon, we will get all the versions that are published for that particular artifact. So enough for, for the theory. Let's have a look now at how this works in practice by giving an example. So for this, we are going to launch a terminal. We need a terminal. So we're going to launch iTerm. I'm going to use iTerm2 for that. Very handy terminal. And um, I've set up an alias that will bring us to uh, a sample project, which is a Scala project called Scala-2.x snippets. And so let's see, we should have a, let, let me reset uh, the project, which I forgot. Um, so, if we look at the current folder, we have a built.sbt file, which is uh, telling us that we have a, but we're using sbt as build tool, and we have the build definition or part of it in this file. So the part that is relevant to this this uh, this talk is the last line here, uh, which says that it it actually updates. Uh, a setting, an SBT setting called library dependencies, and it adds some information in a field called dependencies.dependencies. .dependencies. So we need to figure out where this is, and it's actually located in a file in the projects folder, in, and it's actually this file. So if we open uh, this file in an editor, we have the 
information that we are looking for. And we see actually that we have in this file the object dependencies and it has one member dependency. So that's dependencies.dependencies. .dependencies. And it's a list of dependencies that we want to include uh, that are named Scala Parses, Scala Reflect, Scala Test in Test Mode, Akka, and Scala Async. So <clears throat> these dependencies are defined higher up in the file. So if we go to the top, we see that, uh, well, in dependencies, we import the library object. And this library object contains uh, a line a value for each of the dependencies. And what we see here, if we take, for example, Scala parsers, we can recognize three parts. The first one being the group ID, the second part being the artifact ID, and then followed by a version. And the version is defined in a version object. <clears throat> for example, for Scala parsers, this is the one we are looking for, and it's using version 1.0.6. So let's get going and look up what are the most recent versions of all these dependencies and also of Scala itself using the CSComplete command. So for that, it's handy that we have a second, uh, second uh, terminal. And I'm actually going to split this terminal in two parts. And so we can launch the CSComplete command at the bottom. Now, if we start with Scala itself, we see that we have quite an outdated version of Scala here. Uh, this is 2.12.3, uh, and we know that the current, if we ignore Scala 3, that is getting pretty close to being uh, released. It's now at release candidate 3. But here, you know, uh, the, the most the current stable version of Scala is, is Scala 2.13. So we need to figure out what the current uh, patch release is of Scala 2.12. Now, we can't uh, see the group ID or the artifact ID uh, from the build definition. So we could go, of course, to the Scala documentation and figure that out, or we can take a good guess. So let's, uh, let's do syscomplete org.scala and hit enter. So this results in a number of uh, group IDs being displayed. And this one looks promising. Uh, so if we do org.scala dash uh, line, then we can add the line and we add a colon and hit enter. And we see a lot of artifacts. And for example, we see Scala 3. We have the Scala 3 compiler, among, amongst other things. Um, but here we also see Scala-compiler. So let's have a look at that one. So we complete uh, this further. And now we add a colon. We hit Enter. And we see, because these uh, versions are ordered, so we see that the most current, uh, recent stable version of Scala is Scala 2.13.5. And it's actually, we can see from this list that we have, uh, we have uh, Scala compiler versions all the way back to Scala 2.3.1, which is indeed quite old. So with that information now, uh, we can update the Scala version of the project. And we put it at, oh, Scala, yeah, 2.13.5. That's correct. So with that, we can go to the next one. And we see that we have two dependencies that are in the same group ID. So let's use this one. And let's do CS complete using that um, group ID. And if we go all the way up, we see indeed Scala partial combinators. And this is where this is quite interesting because we see that Scala partial combinators is actually uh, almost systematically uh, succeeded by a Scala major minor version. This is something I already mentioned uh, earlier in this session. 
So we see that Scala partial combinators has artifacts published for Scala 2.11, 2.12, and 2.13. And of course, it's a bit noisy because we also have milestone and release candidates. So with that, we can do Scala uh, parser combinators and use 2.13. And what we see is apart from you know, an upcoming uh, 1.2.0 that doesn't have a stable uh, release yet, we have 1.1.2. So that's for Scala, <coughs> Scala com parser combinators. So let's update that. And since this is in the same uh, group, we can also do Scala async. Same thing, again, published against uh, 2.13. We add a colon, and we see that we the current stable version is 0 0.10.0. So we have done the parsers. Uh, we have the Scala async. Uh, we don't need to do Scala reflect because that's uh, automatically within Scala itself. So it uses the same as a version of Scala. Then we can continue with and we do Scala. Uh, test again, same thing. We need to add 2.13, and with that, we see that the current version is 3.2.8. Then, with that, we only have one. Uh, dependency left that we need to figure out, and that's Akka. So we can do CS complete, um, and we'll just pick one because they share the same version, and we use uh, Akka actor. Again, it's a Scala library, so we add the suffix colon, and we see that we have 2.6.14. And with that, we should have done what is needed. So we'll update this file. And now we can give it a try. So we launch SBT. Project gets loaded. First thing, for example, is we can quickly uh, fire up the REPL by launching the command console. And obviously, we should be in the version that we just uh, bumped. We, should, we are actually, as you can see here, in using Scala 2.13.5. So we hit Control D. We're back at the prompt. Let's clean the project and let's compile it. Now, I've actually done this before today. So uh, if I hadn't done that, we would probably see the new dependencies being pulled in. But that's not the case. So we're just compiling the files. That went OK. And we can run the tests. And they succeed. OK, so we quit SBT. And with that, uh, you know, it was, uh, as you've seen, it was pretty smooth. But I have to confess that I kind of cheated uh, because I went through this uh, before and I actually updated. Uh, some of the source files beforehand. Why is that? Because usually if you go through a major change, like you know, going from 2.12 to the 2.13, you might have had already some deprecation uh, warnings that were in 2.12, which you didn't fix. Chances are that in 2.13, these features are actually gone and you would have comp compilation errors. Or you might have new deprecation warnings in 2.13, which it's always advisable to do that, would have fixed immediately. So that's what I actually did. And hence, uh, this uh, we didn't see any compile errors or uh, 
compiler warnings. So that's uh, uh, that's it for the demo. Um, what we can uh, also mention is that uh, there are obviously other ways to figure out all this information uh, or to do the process that I just demonstrated. Uh, for example, for the latter, there is a tool called Scala Steward. Scala Steward works on Scala projects. And if you have an open source project, it's actually pretty easy to configure. And once you've done that, um, Scala Steward will constantly look at your dependencies. And if it detects that a new version has been published, it will allow you to even automatically uh, generate a PR that can be you know, run through CI CD for verification that everything compiles correctly, etc., etc., without any warnings. And then you can just merge that PR without any further uh, effort. Um, there's also a tool called Scaladex that I can quickly demonstrate. So if you look for Scaladex or Scala Index, we see that it's the first hit uh, that is successful. And this is actually the Scala Library Index. So we see quite a large number of projects, almost 9,000 projects in it with some 10,000 releases. And uh, we can either click F on some of the, the topics or we can say, uh, you know, you can type in some project you're interested in, like for example, ACA. And what this does is that it gives you more information than we we got with CS uh, CS complete, and uh, for example, it gives some background information about the library. It also uh, gives links to documentation if 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 it exists. Uh, we see that uh, you know what are the lines that you need to add to your build definition, and this is uh, this is so for you know. SBT as a build tool, uh, Maven, Gradle, Mill, and, and that's basically it. So with that, we've come to the conclusion of this, uh, this talk. Um, I'm looking forward to um, sh doing a next session about Coursier, which in which I will uh, talk about how we can use Coursier to launch applications. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and see you in the next session.